Hey y'all, good morning. It's the Fumbling Farmer out here. Um, I am just going to do, answer a couple questions people have been asking me. So, and then do show a couple cool things and that's going to be it. So people have been asking me about uh, tying up the squash plants and how I do that. So I thought I would show you that real quick. Um, so I'm out here with my tools. You're going to need some kind of garden shears sort of thing. And then I use this, uh, I got it in the gardening section. I don't know what it's called exactly. I think I call it gardening tape, but it's like this plasticky material it comes in a roll just like this. Um, so you can find it in the gardening center. So I have that. I also have with me this morning a cup of soapy water because yesterday, last night, like in the evening when I came out into the garden just to do a check through, I found some Japanese beetles and they were like getting it on and trying to make more Japanese beetles. So I was like, mm -mm, honey, we're not doing that. So we, um, I went and just drop them into the soapy water and then that's how I dispose of them. Cause like the little red bugs, I could squash them. I don't mind that, but the Japanese beetles are so crunchy and everything. And they're like big and like, bleh. so I put them in the soapy water. That's my disposal method. Anyway, let's get started with this squash thing. So I have a little squash right here. <clears throat> I'll try to set this up so that you can see it. Okay. It's already, some of the stuff has already been tied up. But it needs a little bit more. So before I get started, I usually like to take this and tear off maybe like, it's hard to see, like an arm's length width. And I guess you could cut it off, but I just struggle with it. Because <laughs> why not? So about an arm's length width there. Uh, for this and then I'm gonna look under my plant and see what I want. So see this flower here is spent So I can trim that off. This one here is already bloomed. This one here is already bloomed. So I kind of go in and just gently cut off All the ones that have already bloomed so that they're out of the way and Try to cut them close to the stem without damaging the stem There's also some I'll hold this up so y'all can see too. In the back here that are already bloomed. This one's already bloomed. Okay. And let me see if there's any more back here. This one's looks like one I used to prune. Okay, so I have that. Now it's time for the leaves. So this one right here, this leaf right here. There is no flowers or anything below it, so I'm going to just prune off the leaf. There. This leaf right here, there's no kind of flowers or um, going below it or fruit going below it, so I'm just going to trim that one off. I'm going to trim this one off. And see, it like the ones that this one is actually a bird pooped on this leaf and then it got burned in the sun. But this kind of pruning helps you get rid of these leaves that are damaged and weaker. Oh my gosh, y'all. There's bees. Look at these bees in this flower. Hold on, sorry, I got distracted, but I get excited with bees. Look at that. I hope you can see it because I can't see if I'm aiming well. Y'all, that is awesome. Okay, let's get back to pruning now. Minding our business, let them do their thing. Now I've unlocked my shears. Okay, here they are. Okay, and I think this one has nothing going on. Just gonna take that off. See, look at all the damage on this leaf here. <coughs> what I end up with is just the plant, the um, stuff, the leaves that look pretty good, right? All right, so now I could probably take this one off too. Uh, do I want to take that one off? Let's see how it looks. I think I kind of want to leave that one on. I'm going to leave that one on. Now be careful you don't prune off too much because then um, the leaves need, the plant needs the leaves to make the energy. Okay? Alright, so I have my string here that I already cut. So now I'm just going to go here, kind of finagle it so it's flush with the pole. It's really hard to see through all, all the leaves and everything that are still left. I kind of do a double twist sort of thing. 
and then tie it off. Now this tape does stretch a little bit, so I don't, um, I don't feel too bad. I double knotted it, and there we go. It's tied up, tied up off of there now. All right. So now that that is done, let's look at another one. So let me switch this camera around. I have learned in my filming that when I switch the camera around, it like cuts off my voice for a little bit. So I gotta be quiet while I'm doing that. So this one here has been tied off, but see how there's like this flower here. So I'm not gonna go cutting any of these yet until kind of this flower blooms. This is unpollinated. And then once like this flower blooms, maybe I'll cut off like these lower ones on this one. So that's what I decided to do. Just in case you didn't see the bee earlier, there he is. Look at him. Just happy as can be. Get it? Happy as can be. <laughs> My students would be groaning right now. Okay. Let me just take you and take you around and show you some other cool stuff. What else do I got? Oh, my potato plants, they're back here. Two of them are, are still doing decently, so I left them there. But my other one was all like falling over and everything, so I just did that. All right, there's a lot of um, flowers in here. I know the bees are doing their job, but I'm going to come out and help it too. I just wanted to show you down. Oh, you can't see the wrong. I was the wrong way. Okay, here's my eggplant. And there's some eggplant flowers down there. That bee is just so happy. He's like, mmm, yum, 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 yum. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Go through, go through, keep going through. There are a ton of flowers in here. There's also a ton of squash plants in here, too. So see how this one right here is kind of uh, shriveled up? And that's because I didn't get to it in time to pollinate it. So it just will shrivel up like that. Um, but I think these ones back here, I think I did get to them in time to pollinate them. <coughs> and somebody asked me why I don't just use a, um, why I don't just use a paintbrush instead of picking off the whole flower. Because if I use a paintbrush, then the flower's there. And honestly, it's just easier. And I have so many flowers, so many male flowers, that even if I pick off one flower and pollinate, then there's still other flowers available for the uh, creatures. And the flowers close up overnight. I mean, like during the day. Like they bloom in the morning, but by the end of the day they're spent. So they're not like other flowers that stay open for days at a time. It's just bloom in the morning and then they're done. Okay? Alright, what do we have going on here? This is my zucchini bed tons of male flowers in there I have yet to have okay I have yet to have a female flower this thing here did something funky where it has like the female where is it where are you honey there was a oh down here sorry I'm like upside down this is a female thing but the flower never opened like it's just kind of mushed up there so I think I'm gonna give it a little help opening. All right, and then one more thing. Here's another male flower on this one. So tons of male flowers, and that's kind of normal actually. Here's some radishes. I pulled one to see how I was doing, and it was very small, and my daughter made fun of me. Here's the carrots coming along. I do have to water this morning. I haven't watered yet. I didn't want to be digging around in the plants when they were all wet. So even though I try not to get them wet, okay. This is my last thing I'm gonna show you. That might be a lie. But the other day when I was pruning these, I was like, oh look, my first little tomato. This guy here is still struggling. I'm trying to, I gave him some like Epsom salt stuff because that's supposed to give them the micronutrients that they might be missing. But I don't know. We'll see. All right. Acorn squash are climbing on up. They're like up here now on the vine. My Kajari melons are doing something come here baby you got to go up okay you're not we're not going down we're going up 
Let's help you go up a little bit, okay? All right. Oh, look at that right there. I'll come out and pick those a little bit later. And there's a cucumber plants with tons of flowers. And look at that red bug squash. Another red bug. Are you alive or dead? No, that's a squash, a previously killed dead bug. My um, spaghetti squash down there is doing great. I see another red bug. Come on, hunting with me. Wait, I want to squish it. I want to squish it. You gotta hurry up because these ones are sneaky. It's right there. No, I'm gonna get it because I don't want to lose it. Okay. They can fly. The bugs when they start off. When the uh, yeah, I saw them. You want to pick the strawberries? Go for it. Just put the bag on tightly after. The bugs, when they um, start off, they're just small and red and they can't fly. Then they get like this black stripe down them and then they're able to fly too. Then they turn brown and they're really hard to find. So it's like you got to catch them early. All right. Here's my corn. So here's the corn and the green beans. Growing nice and tall. They're about deck height right now. And in the green beans, if I look under here. Oh, let me try to get these on I got a couple of these are wax beans right here actually so they're coming along and the corn is where I first saw the uh, this is where I first saw the Japanese beetles all right my phone's doing a weird thing where it's giving me like a three minute limit on my videos so I apologize for keeping on jumping around squash okay all right and then my peas fell over. They were growing up really nice and tall, but then they got um, super heavy. But there was one that was filled out. This is starting to fill out. It's not ready yet. But it was filled out yesterday. I picked it and shared it with Anissa, and it was delicious. And this is why peas never... This one's probably ready to go. This is why peas never make it into our house. And yeah, then, we eat them all before they can. I know. They're like a garden snack. And then Nyla's garden, the morning glories girl, girl, um, blooming. And then she has her first zinnia going. And then last but not least, oh my goodness, I said this was my last thing a while ago and here I am still. This garden here, the sunflowers are huge. The borage is growing up there. And the watermelon are finally starting to like vine out a little bit. This watermelon right here got towed up. Somebody had a delicious meal and somebody's tearing up this plant too. So I really don't care actually if they take one or two plants. It's when they start taking more than that that it becomes a problem. Oh, and last thing, last thing. For real, for real, last thing. Okay, for real, for real. Look at these babies. Oh no, this guy fell over. Look at that. Hey, babe. Isn't that gorgeous? Mama? here. And there's there. You have aph aphids on these plants. Do I have aphids on these plants? Yeah, because I saw a red bug and then aphids started crawling on me. Okay, where? Can you see This them? plant. Oh, this one? These two. Let's see. Yep, there they are. Look at that, y'all. That's so gross. So we'll come out here with our paper towel. You don't have to do that. We could get a paper towel. Why? Okay, there's one on that leaf there, and there's one on this, some on these leaves here. Okay, can I leave you to your bug squashing? Okay. My bug squashing strawberry picking videographer. All right, y'all, about to go in now. Um, thank you for following me, me through this. Sorry for all like the glitchiness in the video. I have to figure out why there is a three minute limit on my videos. Probably because my video storage is all gone. Anyway. I will talk to you later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy gardening, y'all.